I'm going to let you in on a secret. Recursion confuses the heck out of me. Perhaps this has destroyed your opinion of me. If you thought I was some wise graybeard guru whose ability to spew forth algorithms on command was surpassed only by his talent for grabbing the perfect pattern on the first try every time, well, uh, that ain't me. I'm always looking stuff up. Syntax, best practices, patterns, consensus approaches to sticky problems, and, of course, how to actually do certain things. Recursion is one of those things, in part because I don't need it very often, so it doesn't really stick in my head. In addition to that, it's also just... tricky. We're going to start very simply in this tutorial, and then if we need more depth, we'll dive deeper next week. Recursion is perhaps most useful when performing mathematical tasks, though it's also handy in a variety of other situations. I think the math is one of the reasons I and many others have some issues with it. I was always pretty good at math in school, but I never had a genius brain for it, and I still have a bit of that instinctive, oh god, it's math, reaction when I lay eyes on it. So, before we get to doing any math, let's just make a simple function that recurses. We're sticking with plain old JavaScript syntax for this. Let's save that and take a look. It does what we expect it to do, shouts hello five times. You'll note that we could easily do this with a for loop, but that'd defeat the purpose of explaining recursion. Also, okay, technically there's a tiny bit of math in there, as we're decrementing the value of how many times each time we recurse. But that's not like math math, so we'll ignore it. Do you see how this function works? Let's step through it as it's called. First, is how many times equal to zero? If yes, we're done. Second. If how many times is not equal to zero, then shout hello once. Third, run shout hello again, but lower the number of times by one. And then go back to step one. That first check for the value of how many times and breaking out of the function if that value is zero is key. Without that, we'd just scream hello into the void forever, even as the value went into the negatives. That'd be no good, but the check lets us return out of the function. This is important for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is unchecked recursive functions can create infinite loops that suck up RAM and processor cycles like greedy vampires until your Chrome tab first locks up and then crashes. That's bad, for the record. So great. This function is recursive, but it's essentially useless. What if we were to make one that was significantly less useless? That's going to require a bit more math, but stick with me and we'll get through this together. We're going to create a Fibonacci sequence. This is a classic mathematical sequence in which all of the numbers after 0 and 1 are the sum of the previous two numbers. So 0 plus 1 equals 1. I'm going to type this out. 0, 1. 0 plus 1 equals 1, so that gives us another 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2, so that gives us 2. 2 plus 1 equals 3, so that gives us 3. And then, and this is where it starts to really grow, we have 2 plus 3 equals 5. So that gives us 5. The next number in the sequence would be 8, the product of 3 plus 5. We can use recursion to do this. We're going to use ES6 syntax here just so we can skip the tedium of setting the count and array parameters and use parameter defaults, which we covered in JS Quick Hits 10. Watch. All right, let's see if this works. It did. So there's a lot to cover here. First, this is not even remotely close to the most elegant solution to a recursive Fibonacci array, especially because you can't return an actual value without some additional enclosure trickery that we're not going to get into right now. It is, however, both optimized, it only calls itself 12 times, and relatively easy to read. The only variable we're ever going to pass to this function is steps. Specifically, how many steps of the sequence do we want to put into our array? I've chosen 12 because it gives a long enough array to really show that the function is working properly, while still staying manageable. Even with super high values, the function's lightning fast, so that's good. Incidentally, the last value in the sequence that JavaScript can handle is number 1476. After that, the numbers get so large that it just fills the array positions with infinity until position 7037. At that point, it errors out. Anyway, step by step, let's do this. If count has reached the desired number of steps, log the array and kill the function. 
If count is less than 2, just push count to the array. This means we will always start with 0, 1 as array values because, you guessed it, they're less than 2. If count is 2 or more, things get interesting. We take a look at the previous two array positions. Position 0 is 0. Position 1 is 1. As is probably obvious, 0 plus 1 equals 1. So we're pushing that value to our array. That means when count is 2, our final array will be 0, 1, 1. So far, so good. Increment count by 1 and run the function again. But this time we're passing it all three values. If you don't understand how count and array didn't have values the very first time, but do every subsequent time, comment on this video and I'll try to help you through it. Steps is still 12, or whatever we set it at when we manually call the function. Count starts at 0 and increments by 1 each time. The array continually gets new values added to it. So the next time we loop through, count is at 3. That still doesn't match steps, which we set to 12, but it's greater than 2, so we get to this block again. Now count is 3, so we're getting array positions 2 and 1. Our array at the end of the previous cycle was 0, 1, 1. So position 1 is 1, position 2 is 1. So 1 plus 1 equals 2, and our new array is 0, 1, 1, 2. We then increment count to 4 and run the function again, which will eventually add the last two array positions and push 3 to the end of our array. This just keeps looping until count is 12, and then our return triggers. So there you go, a basic introduction to recursive functions. I strongly suggest playing around with that Fibonacci sequence. For example, try passing an array that already has some numbers in it and watch as it breaks horribly. How would you fix that problem so that the Fibonacci sequence just gets added to the end of the array? Send me your solutions. Hint, you only have to change a single line of code to be a little bit smarter. Bit of a long tutorial this week. This stuff gets complex fast, but there's real value to it beyond just performing amusing math tricks. We're going to get into that next week when we take a look at recursively iterating over an object. See you then.